So here is the first question of the night. It is an application question. What I always tell people, applications are first, best, next type of questions. They basically test your theoretical knowledge of human behavior and sometimes other content areas, okay? So the first one, a couple are getting married, they're getting married, Sally and Mark, they decide to see a social worker to work on relationship and communication problems. They are of concern to Sally, not so much of a concern to Mark. The couple has multiple sessions. The social worker concludes that Mark has an alcohol problem that he has not addressed. <clears throat> the social worker should first, A, see Mark individually and confront him about the problem and offer a referral for alcohol treatment. B, see Sally and implement an alliance to address Mark's alcoholism. C, don't confront the alcoholism because it's not what the couple initially came in for. D, during a couple session, have a collaborative conversation with the couple regarding um, Mark's alcoholism. Sorry, it says Tony in there. It meant to say Mark. Uh, when it's appropriate to do so during the session. Okay? So we got to remember that we're treating a couple and we have to look at what their presenting problem is. Right? One uh, one partner has a concern that is not relevant or to the other partner. Mark doesn't have any insight. So with that being said, we have to look at what the presenting problem is, eliminate two answers that don't make sense related to the presenting problem to get to our best two. So let's start out with A. See Mark individually and confront him about the problem and offer a referral for alcohol treatment. Do we keep it or do we throw it out? Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. Good. We are throwing it out. Let's look at B. See Sally and implement an alliance to address Mark's alcoholism. Do we keep it or throw it out? Throw, throw it, it out. out. Throw it out. Good. C. Don't confront the alcoholism because it's not what the couple initially came in for. Do throw we keep it, it or out. throw it out? Throw it out. Throw, throw it out. out. Okay. During a couple session, have a collaborative conversation with the couple regarding Tony's alcoholism when it's appropriate to do so during the session. Keep it. Keep it. Okay, so why would it be D? For me, I see it. I'm sorry, my name is Shante. So for me, um, I look at it as remembering why they come in there um, together and it's with them being married or looking to get married that it should be something that they discuss together. Okay. Thank you so much, Shante, for your explanation. And you're absolutely right. Um, it's best to have a collaborative conversation with them together and try to help him to gain insight. Um, the other piece is, is that alcoholism can have a ripple effect on the marital relationship and grow worse over time, right? So the clinician should permit the issue to come to the surface and also help Mark seek help, right? Even though they're talking about communication issues, for all that, the communication relationship issues could very much stem from his alcoholism. We don't know, even though the STEM doesn't say that. So D is the best option. All right, we're gonna go to the next one. A behavior or symptom that is ego dystonic is one which the client experiences as A, comfortable and useful, B, uncomfortable and burdensome, C, one that can be easily denied, D, one that can be easily changed, right? So this is what we call a recall question. What are they testing for in just the STEM? Um, what, they want to know, do you know the difference between syntonic and dis, um, syntonic and dystonic? Yes, they do. Now, here, I'm gonna throw something else at you, Maurice. Do you know what content area this is in? Yes, I, th I know. I think it's on the human behavior part. It's actually under intervention with clients. Okay. And if we're talking about the ego, 
What theorists are we referencing? Is it um, Sigma Freud? Not mm. Sigma Freud. But I know what I know what it is though. Um, it could just kind of mean you um, you are not aware. Well, same time it mean that you. Ego just trying to mean you that you are not aware of the behavior, the problems, but same time it mean that you are aware. Okay. So with that being said, we're gonna look at the answer choices. We're gonna eliminate a comfortable and useful. Do we keep it or do we throw it out? You gonna keep that? Throw it out. Throw it out. I'm hearing a mixture, so I'll put a, a question mark next to it. Let's go to. B, uncomfortable and burdensome. Do we keep it or throw it out? I would say keep yes. it for now. Yeah, I say keep it. Okay. C, one that can be easily denied. Do we keep it or throw it out? I say throw it out. Yeah. Throw it out. Okay. D, one that can be easily changed. Do we keep it or throw it out? Keep it. I say throw it. I think throw it out. I'm not sure. I don't like that word easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I say you can keep one, but you can throw one out. I, I misread it. All right. So right now we're throwing out two. Okay. Now we got to, this is really just a definitional question. You would need to know what eagle dystonic means. So which one are we going to pick? A, comfortable and useful, or B, uncomfortable and burdensome? Um, dystonic, dystonic is um, when B. a person doesn't like it, so it wouldn't be comfortable. Yeah, uh, I think they're not fully aware of the problems also. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, so I'm, with my, I'm with the other counterparts, because I don't know when I, I train my back brain to think dystonic dislike right and for me number two is more of that dislike because it's right. uncomfortable i agree right, right. yeah ego dystonic is not part of who you are your personality so you something like you don't like this like you were saying um and ego syntonic is like part of who you are Go ahead, my one-to-one -one coach and Shayla. <laughs> um, yes, so nonetheless, it is B. So eagle dystonic, the person has, it's a source of discomfort for the client. So of course, it's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to be useful. It's going to be uncomfortable for them. And oftentimes, eagle dystonic is seen as integral and is seen as very useful. So there is your definition. Any questions regarding ego dystonic? Nope. All right, we can move right along. A social worker using a systems approach is working with a couple with two young children who have decided to divorce. All agree that reconciliation is off the table nor a goal for treatment. The focal point of the family meetings is to work through the divorce process, make a plan for the future, and reach an agreement on shared parenting responsibilities and roles. After several sessions, the couple remain angry toward one another, however, share concern regarding their two children. However, they have not made any progress. The social worker should. Again, this is an application question. The social worker should is another way of saying, what should I do first? So, a, as in one, suggests that the parents meet without the children during the sessions due to them being time sensitive. B, send the case to another social worker who may have more experience dealing with this type of dynamic and clinical situation. Three, try to get the parents to focus on the children's well-being, come to an agreement on issues that the parents are most concerned about, and pause other issues until the couple's ready to work through them. D, come to the conclusion that not all families can be helped to resolve divorce situations amicably. All right. So we need to remember who our client is and think about what they're testing. There are a couple of different theoretical concepts, which I'm not going to name yet, because I want to see how well you guys are able to break apart the question on your own. So let's start out with um, 
A, suggest the parents meet without the children during the sessions due to them being time sensitive. Do we keep it or do we throw it out? Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. Okay. I'll throw that out. B, send the case to another social worker who may have more experience dealing with this type of dynamic in clinical situation. Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. Okay. Let me throw that out for you. All right. Three, try to get the parents to focus on the children's well-being, come to an agreement on issues that the parents are most concerned about, and pause other issues until the couple's ready to work through them. Do we keep it or throw it out? Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Okay. Four, come to the conclusion that not all families can be helped to resolve divorce situations advocately. All right. So is everyone in agreement that C, C is the answer? Yes. 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 Why? Because when a person comes to the therapy session, you want to uh, first go with the presenting problem. And I know divorce is kind of a factor, but the key issue come first. So you want to focus on um, how to resolve the issue first. Okay. Thank you so much. Anybody else? For me, the reason why I felt that number um, three was the best um, I try to remember how they came in. So if they came in as a family, I want to try to meet with them same as a family um, and just eliminating the other three causing, you know, the damage that you can do by referring them or sending them to somebody else. Um, and like um, the my other counterpart said, you know, you want to look at why they came in, what the presenting problems are. All right. Y'all going to hate me. No. <laughs> C is gone. C is, C is out. <laughs> so, so then, so then is it the one with treating the, the couple individually or no, not together? It's four. Coming to conclusion. So let's go back over this. I think we need to look at how we're reading this, right? So we're going to break it down from beginning to end. So one, who am I? I'm a social worker using a systems approach. So right there, they're giving you one clue of the concept that they're testing. What do we know about the systems approach, right? Once it's like putting a, a, a rock in a pond and it has a ripple effect. So on a family, if you've got a couple with two young children who have decided to divorce, we have to think about this family system and a divorce, of course, is going to have multiple types of implications. The focal point of the meeting is to work through divorce, the divorce process, right? That's the focal point in getting them to agree on parenting responsibilities. That is the real, real thing they're supposed to be working on. Now, the presenting problem is that the, they haven't made any progress at all. So doing C, trying to get them to focus on children well-being, come into an agreement on issues that parents are most concerned about, and pause other issues until the couple is ready to work through them, it would be secondary to what the real issue is. They're bringing their children in to probably into the sessions. We, it would make, be better fitting for them to do A, suggest that the parents meet without the kids during the sessions due to them being time sensitive. If we're thinking about a systems approach, creating a change in a pattern might help the parents change their interaction communication style. So in this case, there seems to be little point in continuing in the same way until the parents can work together. They remain still very much angry at each other. So removing the children out of the equation and trying to get them to focus on just the children, their parental responsibilities might be a better fit. So I do like that you guys focused on just C in terms of that is a, one of the answers that I would have been stuck between A and C. Now, tell me what are your questions regarding this? This is a good one because you guys all y'all got this one wrong. But looking at this question, you got to remember 
and ask yourself, what is the presenting problem here? They gave you a systems approach as in one underlying theoretical concept that they're asking you to recall and apply it here. The other piece is you have a couple where they're supposed to be working on um, a divorce process and their parenting responses. They agree on you know, the, their children and the, they have a shared concern of their kids. So you gotta start there. They probably can't work on anything else at this point. Um, and that's okay. So we got to focus on what is of the essence and getting them to agree, especially when these sessions are probably time sensitive, right? So any questions about this is probably saying a little tricky, but tricky in a sense of getting you guys to kind of slow down and realize the underlying underpinnings of this type of application question. Cause you'll see it on the test, asking yourself who your client is, what is the theoretical underpinning approaches that you have to recall and apply it? This is why on the master's in the clinical exam, it's a lot harder because you're not only having to recall the information, you have to be able to apply it in the scenario. So that's why I tell uh, people that you wanna read the content to understand what it looks like in real time to be able to apply it because without that, you're gonna miss gaps on top of not making sure that the right study material you have covers that. Any questions about this one? This was, was a good one in terms of learning how to pull out those pieces. And <clears throat> But I do like the fact that you guys still focused on the children, but getting them to focus on the thing at hand that they agree on, but also realizing that we probably got to change their communication prop, their can be, uh, excuse me, communication style. Does that make sense? Y'all guys are quiet. Don't get quiet on me now. <laughs> yeah, leave. it makes sense. I'm trying to it drill does. this into you guys. Yeah, it does. Um, someone in the comments says these exam questions are so tricky. No wonder the first time passing rates are low. Nope. Uh, so let's let's talk about that. Um, I'm going to pause it here because uh, that's a good. The reason why the ASW passing rates are the way they are because of some of the underlying underpinnings of the test. Of course, there's systemic institutionalized racism that is there, but it's also how we read the questions, making sure you have the right type of content to be able to break those questions down, making sure you have the right study material that supports how you're learning, making sure that your learning style matches the study material that's out there. So I do wanna you know, talk about that. We cannot change the exam, we can't. We can't change the people that write the exam. All we can do is change our response to it, change our mindset around it and keep it moving. Because us talking about what was me is not going to help. So I know that was a little, a little tough love, but I got to give it to you guys because it's one of those things. If we stay in that mindset, we'll never move. All right. So all you can do is move forward with what you got, learn from your mistakes and move along because we need to get this license done. So thank you for that question in the chat, but we got to go. So we got to keep moving. Shantae says the first time I missed my um, by one point and the second one by seven points. That's okay. You, all that tells you, Shantae, is that if you miss it the second time by seven points, you're close. Anything under 10 points is close, but that means that what you're using doesn't work. Do not make the expensive mistake of using the same material over and over again. That has not passed you. It's a waste of money, waste of time. If you're close in the passing score, that means you probably need to check your technique. You probably need to figure out if that material is matching what you need to pass. Everyone is very different, but I'm telling you after coaching or 325 people that I've passed alone, that mindset will keep you captive. We gotta remove that, okay? Failure is part of the process. You were very close. We gotta keep going. Thanks, Hernane. I see she's saying agree. All right, so that was our little, little moment of mommy, social work moment. We gotta move this along. Kayla and Sean have been married for over 20 years. Sean consistently comes home drunk and falls asleep in the living room after work, missing dinner and doesn't participate in his family's daily life. Kayla tells the 
uh, children that he is tired of working so hard and that it is better for him to rest as he needs all his strength for his demanding job. Kayla is using the defense mechanisms of A, denial and projection, B, denial and rationalization, C, idolization and rationalization, D, sublimation and undoing. So this question is not only a recall question regarding defense mechanisms, which you will see on all levels of exam, bachelor's, master's, and clinical. The tip I could give you here about defense mechanisms is you have to find examples of what it looks like in real time. It can't just be you reading the definition. That's not going to stick. So find examples of what it looks like and go from there when you're studying. There's a lot of them, right? The other piece here, why is it application? Because you're having to pull on recalling that definition and applying it to the example that this demonstrates in the vignette. All right. So A, denial and projection. Are we keeping it or do we get rid of it? Throw it out. Get rid of it. Throw it out. Okay. B, denial and rationalization. Do we keep it or throw it out? Keep, keep it. it. Keep it. C, idolization and rationalization. Do we keep it or throw it out? Throw, throw it out. out. All right, y'all. Now, D, sublimation and undoing. Do we keep it or throw it out? Throw, throw it out. out. All right. So let's talk about the answer, denial and rationalization. Why? Why is it that the answer? Because I feel like she's in denial about his problem he got. So she rationalized, she kind of rationalized him to the kids about he's tight from work. All right. Thank you, Maurice. Anybody else? No, I agree with uh, Maurice. Kayla is in denial about um sean's behavior and mm. she's making up excuses for why he um always comes home tired from work to kind of save face yes ma'am so maurice and shayla you guys were right spot on so kayla is coping with a very difficult situation um she's denying the reality that her husband is drunk so substituting a more acceptable explanation in place of one that's unacceptable to her, she offers a reason why it's, it's better this way, rationalizing, rather than feeling angry or uncomfortable about the consequence of her husband's behavior. So that is the last question of the night, you guys. Um, I hope this session was fruitful. I love you guys, but I'm going to give it to you. You know, when I see cognitive distortions. Um, I'm going to correct you and I want you guys to be able to get licensed and get out of my room. <laughs> Love you, but my job is not to keep you here. I want you out. So with that being said, I love you guys. I will see you guys next time. If you have any questions for me, you guys know you can find me on many different platforms except for Instagram. Um, if you want to do a free consultation, you're more than happy to go ahead, click that link and set one up with me. I'm available during the week. Uh, we do have a boot camp that starts on the 28th. Um, and if you want to join that, you can do a consultation for it. Um, and most of you guys are that are attached to my email, I'll send out an email blast that way. Um, we'll be doing group coaching only about four times out of the year, just because they're usually almost two months long. Um, one-on-one -on -one coaching is ongoing. So if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching that is available, uh, please feel free to go ahead and do a consultation so I can see how I can help you, um, get out of this space and, um, move on to get licensed. So you guys take care and I will see you guys next time. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.